Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is your worship devotional guide for Sunday, March the 22nd. You want to make sure that you have your Bible, uh, a printout of the devotional notes, or your digital copy, whichever one works for you better. Simple format we're going to follow. We're going to pray together this morning. Then I'm going to offer you some comments from a passage of scripture. You make sure if you need to pause and go over them with yourself or your family more detail, that's fine. And then we'll close with some prayer. Should take about a half hour. So let's begin with prayer coming from Psalm 91 verses 1 through 3. Let's pray. Lord, we live in the shelter of the Most High. We rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That is you, Jesus. This we declare to be true about you. You alone are our refuge, our place of safety. You are our God, and we trust in you. You have promised to rescue us from every trap and to protect us from every deadly disease. And so we worship you, our God and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And we sing as you've taught us from Psalm 46. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never Still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. Were not It is he, Lord Sabaoth, his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath will. turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, we will look at verses 1 through 8 together. Beginning reading in Revelation chapter 6, this is the passage about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Verse 1, Now I watched when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say, with a voice like thunder, Come! And I looked, and behold, a white horse. And its rider had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come! And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth, so that people should slay one another, and he was given a great sword. When Jesus opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come! And I looked, and behold, a black horse, And its rider had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, a three quarts of barley for a denarius. Do not harm the oil and the wine. 
When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures say, Come! And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And its rider's name was Death. And Hades followed him. They were given authority over the fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine, with pestilence, and by wild beasts of the earth. So as you think about this passage this morning, I wouldn't be surprised if a number of you have already come across this passage and said, hmm, given the current circumstances, locusts eating up a large portion of the, the earth, um, earthquakes all across the northeast for the last couple of weeks, and here we have pestilence. It is a question that we ask, are the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming? Maybe a better question we could ask is, are they riding yet? I want to look at four considerations for you this morning. Who is riding? When do they ride? How do they ride? And why do they ride? The first one, who is riding? We're going to look at, and that's based on Revelation 6-2. And I looked, and behold, a horse. Now, what you do is you look at the rest of Scripture, you find out that the king's messenger always uses a horse to deliver messages for the king. And indeed, some of you may know this, the word angelos, angel, means messenger in Greek. And so what we're being told here is that these who are riding on these horses are messengers of God. They are angels who deliver messages of God to the earth. They don't deliver messages the way we're used to in terms of just speaking the message. They also enact what the message is about. So if the message is about taking someone then the angel takes someone. If the, if the message is about bringing an earthquake, then the angel brings an earthquake. There's a good illustration of this, of Zechariah chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. Zechariah had a vision during the night, and he saw a man sitting on a red horse that was standing among some myrtle trees in a small valley. Behind him were riders on red, brown, and white horses. So Zechariah was with an angel, and he said, uh, to the angel who was talking with him, My Lord, what do these horses mean? The angel said to him, I will show you. But then the rider standing among the myrtle trees explained, They are the ones the Lord has sent out to patrol the earth. Then the other riders reported to the angel of the Lord who was standing among the myrtle trees. That would be Jesus himself before the incarnation. We have been patrolling the earth and the whole earth is at peace. Another detail from Revelation chapter 6 telling us these are angels who are riding is the rider had a bow. Those are the tools that he needed to make sure that the message is heard and enacted upon. Indeed, all of these four horsemen have the necessary tools. Revelation 15, 1 gives us evidence of this. I saw in heaven another marvelous event of great significance. Seven angels were holding the seven last plagues, which would bring God's wrath to completion. So there we have it. Who is riding the four horsemen of the apocalypse are Four angels sent by God to deliver the message of God's eternal judgment against all who rebel against him. Probably more saying it to us then is the question, who is writing? Go to Revelation 6 verse 1. Now I watched when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals. So the prior context from Revelation 4 and 5 is a worship service. That worship service happened at Jesus' coronation when he ascended following the resurrection. So this is something that's already occurred and at the end of Revelation 5, Jesus gets the right to take up the scroll that has all the details of how God's going to rule and reign over the earth during these last days, from the day Jesus first left to the day he first comes back. Those are the last days. We're in them today. Uh, he says, I heard one of the four living creatures. Those are the angels around the throne in verse 4. That's their place of authority. They're the ones that cry out with a loud voice, come, come calling these other four angels to come out and receive the authority to do whatever is described in this scroll as Jesus opens it one seal at a time. Matthew 24, verses 6 through 8. It's called the mini-apocalypse because it's where Jesus describes the last days. He describes the kinds of things that are happening between now and the end of time. Jesus says you'll hear wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. These things will take place, and the end won't follow immediately, though. Nations will go to war against nation, and kingdom against nation, and there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. The answer to the question of when do they ride is that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are actually riding right now. 
from the moment of Jesus' ascension and coronation where he was given authority and he opened these four scrolls until the day he returns. These four horsemen, these four angels, are riding throughout the earth bringing news of God's judgment through these four different methods. And that takes us to the third question. How do they ride? Verse 2 through 8, let's just briefly look at each of these and see what it says here. So the first one says a white horse. Now you might think this is someone who is doing a good thing because the color white often means good things. But in Revelation, there's someone else who takes on the color white, and that would be Satan. He presents himself as an imitator, and we find this a little later on in Revelation, where he gives himself as an alternative messiah. So he's given authority over these last days. Yes, he's in prison, but he rules from prison over the fallen world. Revelation 13, 7, Satan, the beast, was allowed to make war on the saints, to conquer them to some degree. And authority was given to him to over every tribe and people and language and nation. Luke 21, 8, Jesus says, See that you are not led astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. The time is at, at hand. Do not go after them. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen 13 through 14, connects Satan with these false apostles. Such men are false apostles, false teachers, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light who wears white. So the first horse of the apocalypse is Satan himself. The second one, the second seal, and the rider there is the color red is the horse, and he is given the permission, the rider, to take peace from the earth that people should slay one another. Clearly, this is a demon who incites wars. Indeed, Luke 21, 9 through 10. When you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For these things must take place, but the end will not be at once. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. One of the saddest things of the last 2,000 years of history is constant warfare on the earth. Somewhere there has always been a war since Jesus left. The third one, beginning in verse 5 and then verse 6, we have this black horse and its rider carries a pair of scales. Now, those are the things that a merchant would use to weigh out when you bought food in the market. And indeed, that's what's going on here. A quart of wheat for denarius, that doesn't mean anything to us. Uh, maybe we could say it this way. You went to the store this week and you actually found a, a bottle of hand sanitizer and it cost 100% more than what it normally does. Or you found the last loaf of bread on the shelf and instead of costing 3 or $4, it cost 3 or $400. That's what happens with a demon who brings famine. Famines often go with wars. That's exactly what's going on here. Then the fourth seal and the fourth beast. This one is a pale horse. It's interesting. That color is kind of hard to pin down. It's a, a pale greenish yellow, kind of a sickly color of something that's dying. And indeed, the writer's name is Death. And Hades, the grave, hell, follows after him. He's given authority over the, the fourth of the earth, over a fourth of the population, to kill with the sword and with famine and pestilence and wild beasts. In other words, this is a demon, a comprehensive one who brings all sorts of calamities, including natural disasters, upon people these last 2,000 years. Luke 21, 11, Jesus warned us of this. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences. We might add hurricanes and tsunamis. And there will be terrors and great signs in the heaven, in other words. So these are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They're demons today who are riding, bringing calamities, bringing a taste of judgment that the seven plague bowls will pour out in fullness on the final day right before Jesus returns. So who is riding? These messengers of God. When do they ride? Today in the last days. How do they ride? They bring tastes of judgment to come. Why do they ride? Go to verse 8. And I looked and behold that pale horse, that gray, green, washed out death type of horse. Final judgment, Hades is the one who follows him. Listen to Revelation 1, 17 through 18. When I saw Jesus, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. He laid his hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I died, but look, I'm alive forever. And I hold the keys of death and the grave, Hades. Revelation 20, 13 through 15, at the end of the book, we also see this. The sea gives up its dead at the final judgment, and death and the grave, Hades, give up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. 
Anyone whose name is not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. In other words, the four horsemen of the apocalypse who ride today, when they bring death through these things, when they put people in their graves through these things, and if they don't know Jesus, send them to hell through these things. It is God's mercy to warn us that there is still judgment. So who is riding? There are four angels, messengers for God. When do they ride? They ride today in the last days. How do they ride? They, they ride to bring a taste of judgment to all who rebel against the Lord of life. And, and why do they ride? They ride to warn people that Jesus is coming back. And when he does, he will bring final judgment, worse than anything that came before. So brothers and sisters, I would urge you to think as we are in this period of time, uh, take precautions to protect you and your family because you're called to serve Jesus with your lives. But don't fear. To live is Christ, to die is gain. If you do fear, cry out to the one who's promised to protect you. He will hear you and bless you. And then think about your neighbors, your family, and your friends, strangers who do not know Jesus. And take the gospel to them. If all you do is hand out the little card we have, more than anything else today, we need to seek the conversion of the lost. Let's pray and then we'll sing a song together and we'll be done. Lord Jesus, we are afraid of the terrors of the night. We are afraid of the arrows that fly by day. We have dread of the disease that stalks in darkness. We worry about the disaster that strikes in the middle of a beautiful day. But you have promised that a thousand fall at our side, that ten thousand are dying around us. These evils will not touch us, that though we die in this world, we will live with you forever with new bodies and new souls. Give us the strength of these convictions. Let us not worry about the four horsemen. Let us know that they are not messengers to us because Jesus has taken our judgment for us. There is only the blessing of the second resurrection waiting for us. We pray that you give us this confidence. Oh, Jesus, use our church to save people. In Christ's name, amen. Let's all sing How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. Sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Dear name, the rock on which I build my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. By thee, my prayers accept and stay, although with sin defiled. Satan accuses me in vain, for I am owned a child. Thus, my shepherd, brother, friend, my prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, we urge you to use the pastoral prayer items that we sent out with this email. Make sure you pray for your brothers and sisters and all the other needs on there. And then look at the announcements. They're pretty ordinary, but take a look at them. And remember, if any of you need anything at any time during these circumstances, your elders and deacons are prepared to come and help. So just get in touch with us. We love you. We're grateful for Jesus. He's coming back for all of us. Bless him for all his goodness. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye.